Hello there, friends, and welcome to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I am Bishop A. Reginald Littman, your host and the senior pastor of the New Mountaintop Church. We're excited, as always, to share our teachings and God's Word with you. Do us a huge favor and share this video along with the free PDF handout that goes along with this teaching that you can find in the description box below with someone you love. Also, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. All of that helps us to be pushed out a little farther so that we can reach more and more people with these simple yet practical teachings that are helping so many people. And this week, we're moving into part six of our series entitled Lessons from the Twelve Disciples. This week, we're going to be looking at the disciple Bartholomew, who is also known as Nathaniel. And we're going to be talking about faith, leadership, and redemption. So make sure that you have a pen and pad handy, or be sure that you go and download the PDF right after you get through watching this week's Bible study. And again, I'm so happy to have you with us in this week's session. If you've missed the first five parts, go back and catch up so that when we move into part seven next week, you'll already be up to speed on everything. And again, welcome to this series. So as we talk about the disciple Bartholomew, aka Nathaniel, let's look at some of his background and his professional history with Jesus as far as what he did for a living. So we've been kind of talking about each of the disciples up to this point and where they were called from, what kind of profession that they had. Well, Bartholomew's background still remains somewhat obscure in the Bible. And he's often referred to as Nathaniel. He was likely from Cana at Galilee. And tradition also suggests that he was known for his honesty and his integrity. Now, here's what I love about this, is that even though we don't have a tremendous amount of biographical details about Bartholomew, a.k.a. Nathaniel, what is clear is what's most important. And that is that his life was known for honesty and integrity. You know what? I think you and I could both learn some valuable lessons just from that part right there, if we don't go any further, to live our life in such a way that we will be known for honesty and integrity. Do you think that's worthwhile? I certainly believe that is so worthwhile. And again, welcome if you just joined in. This week, we are studying the life of Bartholomew, a.k.a. Nathaniel. This is part six of our series entitled Lessons from the Twelve Disciples. So, we know that he was born in Cana in Galilee. And you're going to hear in this session this week a little bit more about Cana and a very interesting event that happened in Cana that he would have most likely witnessed. So let's look, first of all, at a passage of scripture that comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 45 through verse number 49. And there we read about his background and his calling. And it says, Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, watch this question. Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. Now that's really interesting. I know that you've heard that statement made before by preachers or someone doing a teaching or a sermon before. But did you know that the person who actually spoke those words was Bartholomew, aka Nathaniel? Isn't that interesting that he instantly equates 
Christ with where he had come from. Because Nazareth was a very obscure place with no notable uh, history or events that took place other than it being the home base of Jesus. And so Bartholomew speaks right openly. He speaks very plainly and really bespeaks the mindset of the culture. Can anything good come from there? Well, he was indeed about to find out for himself. Let's look at the remainder of this passage. Verse 47, when Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Wow. Jesus instantly calls that out about Bartholomew, a.k.a. Nathaniel, that there is no deceit in this man. And watch, watch verse 48. <laughs> he says, how do you know, how do you know me? Nathaniel asked. I, I love how real and practical he, he was. And Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And so there's so many tremendous lessons in just these verses so far. First off, that the Lord has no problem with us being real and being who we are and walking in the reality and totality of who we are. So many times we try to pretend to be somebody else or we uh, dress up and put on our spiritual makeup, if you will, to try and alter the appearance and uh, how we present ourselves to other people. But isn't it amazing as you look at this passage to see that not only does the Lord know us by name, he knows us by nature. And even in spite of our, our mouth, our thought process, the way we behave ourselves, he can still call us into greatness. And the other thing about this that I find so striking and so amazing is that Nathaniel instantly speaks doubt about the Christ. But as soon as he comes into immediate fellowship with him, he now engages him in verse 49, rabbi, which means teacher or master teacher. Notice what he says. You are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. So Nathaniel instantly gravitated toward Christ when he saw that indeed he knows me. He knows where I've been. He knows what I've done. He knows my personhood. And he has been watching me from afar. Because Jesus says to him, I saw you while you were still under that fig tree. And if we were to really embrace the totality of who Christ is and the call of Christ even upon our own lives, then we'd have to say, you know what? He really is the son of God, really is the king of Israel because he knows us, yet he still calls us. Isn't that something to really have joy about? He knows who we are and how we are, yet he still calls us in spite of who we are and how we are. And that alone ought motivate us to know him and to walk with him that much closer. I know it does for me because I'm not perfect. And in case somebody told you wrong, <laughs> you're not either. But he calls us in spite of us. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing, family. So let's check out the calling and the family of Nathaniel. Now, Nathaniel's calling by Jesus is really an example of how Christ saw potential in people beyond their initial doubts or their initial reservations. And his response to Jesus's call demonstrated a willingness to follow and recognize Jesus as the Son of God. So while the Bible does not really provide extensive details about Nathaniel's family, it is worth noting that he was part of the inner circle of disciples who were the closest to Jesus. So let's talk about some of the key moments in his life. Well, 
Nathaniel's ministry with Christ may not be extensively documented as some others are in the scriptures, but he was present during many significant moments and he literally witnessed Jesus' miracles. He heard his teachings and he was part of the group that spread the gospel after Christ's resurrection. Nathaniel was likely present at the wedding at Cana of Galilee that's found in John chapter number 2, verse 1 through 11. Because remember, Cana in Galilee was his hometown. So assuredly, he was there and he likely knew the people there. He may have even been a family member of this couple. And if you remember the story, they run out of wine. And Mary had been invited. Uh, there are indications that indications that suggest that Mary was a relative and she had been invited and she brought Jesus along with her. By the way, footnote here, wherever you go, make sure you take the Lord with you. And he then turns this water into wine. And this was the first recorded miracle that takes place in John chapter number two. And what's so significant about the wedding at Cana of Galilee is that this event demonstrates Jesus's power and divine authority. And I love it because of all places for him to work his first miracle, he chooses to work it at a wedding. And if there's any place we really do need the blessings of the Lord, it is in marriage and all sorts of relationships. So Nathaniel was highly likely to have been in attendance at the wedding. Can you imagine that? He's there at the wedding and then he sees the miracle. That would definitely motivate him to be a follower of Christ. But Nathaniel would also have been one of the disciples when Jesus miraculously fed the multitude with just a few loaves and two little fish as recorded in John chapter number six, verse one through 15. Now, this event underscores the abundance that can flow from the faith that we have in Christ. And Nathaniel would have definitely have been a part of watching the miracle of taking a little bit and turning it into a whole lot. And I want you to go back and read the passage, you'll find it in the handout that's down there in the description box. Go and check out John 6, verse 1 through 15, and imagine yourself as a part of that experience, as Nathaniel clearly would have been. And even in your own life, remember that Christ can take a little and make it spread into a whole lot. Well, as we look at the life of Bartholomew, a.k.a. Nathaniel, there's some lessons that we can all extract, and there are numerous lessons, but I want to just provide you with two. And in the handout, there are some discussion questions that you can delve a bit deeper and really apply this to your everyday life. Because number one is recognizing Christ's authority. You see, just as Nathaniel eventually recognized Jesus as the Son of God, we must open our hearts and minds to recognize Christ's authority in our lives. Remember, he was doubtful at first. But even when we doubt, or even when we have preconceived notions about people and or God and or the people that represent God, we have to always recognize the authority of Christ. And that's a great takeaway from the life of Nathaniel because the moment he realized the Lord knew him, he knew the Lord. And we too must recognize his authority. Here's the second major takeaway I wanna leave you with this week. And of course you can add other takeaways as you study this on your own a little further. The second one is honesty and integrity. 
You see, Nathaniel's reputation for honesty is a reminder of the importance of living with integrity in our own lives. Remember that the moment that Jesus saw him, he said, this man has integrity. This man lives with honor. And he says to Jesus, how do you know me? Right? But understanding this is so key because as believers, we are challenged, charged, and expected to live with honesty and with integrity. Nathaniel's reputation for honesty is a reminder of the importance of living with integrity in our own lives. I want to challenge you this week. Reflect on any doubts or prejudices that you may have about Jesus, his work, the church, ministers, or even people in general. And the question is this, are you willing to set them aside and truly seek him as Nathaniel did? Consider how you can live with greater honesty and greater integrity in your daily life, just like Nathaniel did. When the Lord looks at you, you want him to be able to say about you what he said about Nathaniel. This person lives honestly and is a person of integrity. So, in conclusion, Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel, may have been a lesser known apostle, but his journey of faith and leadership and redemption is a powerful example for all of us. You see, through recognizing Christ's authority, embracing honesty and integrity, and following his call, we can all draw inspiration and guidance for our everyday lives. Wow, what a great character Nathaniel, aka Bartholomew, is for us to follow. I enjoy sharing these teachings with you. Please let me know in the comments if you're getting anything out of this. And be sure to like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, get that handout so that you can take a deeper dive and internalize this teaching for you to become that disciple that Jesus speaks of as a person of integrity. This is Bishop Littman. You've been watching the Midweek Refill. May the Lord bless you and be sure to join me right here, 9.30 a.m. every Sunday morning for our live worship experience. Until next time, you go with God.